Sometime in 1991, and I'm playing Operation Stealth, the James Bond adjacent point and click game on the Commodore Amiga. In Operation Stealth, you play CIA agent John Glames, or confusingly, you play CIA agent James Bond in the US release, who was sent to the fictional South American Banana Republic of Santa Paragua to find a missing stealth plane and do standard spy stuff like forge a passport, witness a drive-by shooting, get held at gunpoint by goons, then get tied up and left to die in a cave, get held at gunpoint again, but this time get tied to a rock and thrown into the sea, infiltrate the palace of Santa Paragua disguised as part of a magician's act, but without wearing a disguise, escape the palace's elaborate maze-like structure pursued by Cuban guerrilla looking guys who have clearly never skipped arm day, get held at gunpoint again, but this time escape on a jet ski and into a submarine, go diving in shark infested waters, get held at gunpoint yet again, but this time end up in a cage above a piranha tank, escape using an acid pen and a gadget watch, escape another maze, but this one's in the sewers and the rats are huge, sabotage a stealth jet with a CD-ROM, blow up a volcano base with an exploding cigarette, and at the end it comes to this. I am hanging from a helicopter landing skid. There is a woman in a short skirt hanging next to me because it's a James Bond game. An evil guy is flying the helicopter and the helicopter has a bomb attached to it. The bomb is about to drop. Now the game gives you seconds to do something about the bomb and so I try. I can't move anywhere and there isn't time to move anyway. There's nothing I can see to pick up or interact with apart from the bomb and interacting with the bomb does nothing. So I check my inventory and it is sorely lacking in bomb disposal material. The bomb drops, it's game over. By luck and experience I have a save file so I reload and I'm hanging from the helicopter again. This time I try to use everything I have in my inventory. I combine everything I have with the bomb and the bomb still drops. I reload the save file. I click around the screen because maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there's another part of the helicopter I can interact with. Maybe there's a pixel somewhere on the screen which does something. The bomb drops. I make several more attempts and the bomb drops every time. Nothing works. At this point I have clicked every part of the screen, I have combined every item I have with the bomb, I have equipped every item I have and then clicked every part of the screen and no combination of things works. Nothing works because you're supposed to tie an elastic band to the bomb and I don't have an elastic band. Playing Operation Stealth back in 1991 I don't know that I need an elastic band because I don't know that an elastic band even exists in the game. So I never finish Operation Stealth. Eventually I give up and I move on. And much later, when Operation Stealth for some reason comes back into my memory, hmm, Operation Stealth. I go online to check out the solution. It's only then that I learn about the elastic band. So I go back further and watch a walkthrough video and finally, some 30 years later, I discover how to finish this game. The elastic band is here in the underwater segment with the sharks. When you drop into the water, you turn left, away from the direction you need to swim and onto the next screen. The elastic band is here, in a piece of seaweed. It's not just that the seaweed is indistinguishable from the rest of the scenery, or that to get the elastic band you have to examine the seaweed from one very, very exact spot. It's not even that the sharks are so fast and that you are so slow that you don't have time to explore. And it's not even that the arcade sections of the game are obviously arcade sections and not puzzle sections, and that the underwater shark section is presented as an arcade section. It's that the game will let you continue without the thing you need to finish the game. It is actually impossible if you arbitrarily head right when you drop into the water that you don't even see the screen with the elastic band in it. With hindsight, it's arguable that I should have known something was missing because this is not the only time you can easily miss something you're supposed to do. Long before you get to the elastic band, you have to go visit the Bank of Santa Paragua to change some money to buy a flower, so you do, and later you get held at gunpoint and tied up in the cave, and when you escape, you need to go to this man on the beach and buy a bracelet, or you will later drown.
Problem number one is that the game doesn't make it clear that you have to talk to this man or that you have to talk to him before you visit your hotel room. And it doesn't give a reason why at this point in the game, you're going to immediately need a bracelet to prevent yourself from drowning. Problem number two is that if you do talk to this man and learn about the bracelet, you don't have any money to buy it. It turns out you were supposed to change a second lot of money in the bank earlier, and if you didn't do it before the cave sequence, then the notes you had in your inventory just sort of disappear, and that's it. You can't get more money, so if you didn't save the game before the underwater sequence, your only option is to go back and start the game all over again. Operation Stealth is notorious for this and for many similar problems. If you don't take the pen out of your briefcase early in the game, you'll eventually lose the briefcase and you can't use the acid in the pen to break the lock in the cage. You can buy the wrong type of flower from the florist and the agent you're supposed to meet will just never turn up. But uh, to be fair in this one, the game is pretty explicit about what type of flower you're supposed to buy, so that one's really on you. And if you later find the elastic band, you can just as easily miss the inflatable raft in this garbage can, and you'll die at the end anyway by falling into the ocean. This is what has come to be known as softlock. That's softlock, not John Lock. John Lock is a very different thing. Softlock is a situation in video games where the player gets stuck in a place inside a game. This means that the player can't keep moving forward or going back and is unable to do anything about it. However, at its core, the game is still playable. Softlock is a common problem in a lot of older adventure games. Sierra Online games especially are notorious for it, though examples still exist today. A lot of softlock traps are the result of bugs or glitches, but some, like those in Operation Stealth, are just the product of bad design. You can't use logic to solve them, so the only solution to softlock problems is a kind of trial and error where you click everything you can see on the screen, on every screen just in case, and save the game regularly, making sure you use unique game files so you can jump back only as far as you need. The trouble is, it's not always clear how far back you need to go. It's not clear, even if you're aware that there's an elastic band, where that elastic band would be. So which of the 20 to 30 independent save files you've created is even the right one? There's a reason for this video that's not just an excuse to talk about an old adventure game. It's the reason I think the Operation Stealth has stayed in the back of my mind and why it suddenly jumped back into my consciousness after all these years. And it's those softlock traps. Because back in 1991, at 11 years old, they taught me a terrible lesson. You can save a video game, and if you don't, you can restart and try again. It's often a painful and arduous experience, but you can do it. You can undo your mistakes. You can't do that in life. The painful lesson I took from Operation Stealth, of all things, is that you can softlock your own life. Terrifyingly, you might already have softlocked your life. Just like a badly designed adventure game, life is not going to tell you that you should buy the metaphorical bracelet, that you should check the metaphorical seaweed in case there's a metaphorical elastic band you'll someday need. It's just gonna leave you to it and we all really have no choice but to hope for the best. We're all left to blunder on just hoping for the best. The silver lining is that the opposite sometimes holds true. You might softlock your life, yes, but Maybe you only thought you did. Maybe you did find and pick up the elastic band without thinking about it. Maybe you made an unconscious decision to change a second lot of money. And maybe, just maybe you accidentally found some people who, when you're in danger of getting soft lock, when your life spirals out of control through nothing you could have controlled or expected, are the exact thing you didn't know you need. And if you have those people, in many ways, they are the save files which allow you to undo your mistakes. So I guess maybe that's the most valuable lesson that Operation Stealth taught me. But there's a plot twist. 
So in the course of making this video, I was doing some research and I came across this 2014 blogspot post in which a blogger called Joe Pranovich was detailing his own playthrough of Operation Stealth. And as I was reading, I noticed this screenshot at the exit to the underwater shark sequence. This screenshot. Do you see it? Do you see what it says? The passage is just big enough to let a person in, especially if they have an elastic band. I do have the elastic band. Don't I? Delphine Software, the programmers and writers involved in making this game, they all knew what they'd done. They knew they'd made the elastic band impossible to find. And their solution was not to fix the problem. It wasn't even to, I don't know, make the elastic band more findable or put it in a more logical place. No, their solution was a message so obscure so abstract that I as an 11 year old and Joe Pranovich as an adult in 2014 and who knows how many other people glazed over because we were too busy with the sharks that swim too fast and kill you even if they don't hit you. We were too busy spending hours trying to get through a torturous underwater sequence that eventually was more a matter of luck than skill. Delphine Software could have fixed the game, but chose not to. Its programmers chose instead to put in what amounts to a disclaimer, a disclaimer which makes it your problem. The game's not unfair. We told you about the elastic band. You missed the message. You softlocked your own game. It's your fault. And then you missed the inflatable raft anyway, so where's the disclaimer for that? If you made it to the end of this video, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something of some value in it. Um, as usual with all of these things, it would be really good to me if you could, you know, like, subscribe, leave a comment if you've got any of your own thoughts about how you've soft locked your own life or hopefully haven't soft locked your own life. Um, and I guess I should say I have a Patreon now. So um, go check that out if you want to buy me a morning coffee, I guess, every month. Something like that. I don't know how to do these things. Um, thank you.